Hello. Today, I'm going to do my start of Donnie Allison's 1979 Oldsmobile from the Daytona 500 of that year. Uh, the last video for Richard Petty's uh, 83 car, I kind of did a build. This one, I'm more, more going to show basically painting. Uh, on this one instead of building it. As you can see, I've built the engine already. So what I have left to do is basically the chrome stuff. So it's the carburetor uh, intake, or sorry, the rocker covers, valve covers. I ain't put on there yet. Everything else is on it. So this is how I go about doing my painting. So I'll build, like, the engine. I'll build all of it first. And then I'll go through and I'll brush paint everything. I don't have an airbrush. So everything I do is either brush paint or rattle can. And stuff turns out okay, as far as I can tell. So <clears throat> let's get started. I want to do the block of the heads in a gunmetal. Uh, it's about the closest I can come to uh, for like a bare block because um, right around this time most people were doing they weren't painting the engines anymore they just had a, a bare engine block <clears throat> so that's how I've been doing most of my stuff I'll do the transmission in aluminum I'll probably do the pan in a different colored silver the transmission pan the oil pan I'll do black. Uh, this is the alternator. I'll try to do the bracket in black and maybe aluminum on the alternator itself. Everything else will be gunmetal. The intake I'll do in a different colored silver other than aluminum. Uh, I don't know which one I'll use yet. I just usually pick something and then I'll do a black distributor. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'll try to keep all this in camera and I'll try not to spill my paint everywhere. <laughs> so. This stuff that I'm using is Tester's Model Master Metalizer. And it's tough to find anymore, honestly. And you got to do about two coats of it for it to look good. But once it's dry, it turns out with a pretty good look to it. Also, I got a tip from my, uh, the president of my fan club, who was actually a coworker. Um, he said I need to incorporate my useless knowledge of NASCAR into my videos. So I'm going to try to start doing that as well. The first tidbit of information I have, the Grand Marshal for the 1979 Daytona 500 was Ben Grizzara, and I best know him from the movie The Big Lebowski. He was Jackie Treenhorn, and from what I hear, Jackie makes a hell of a Caucasian, according to the movie. <laughs> so that's my first bit of useless knowledge about this race, or about the race car. I'm just going to try to while I'm doing this build, I'm going to try to focus on useless knowledge from that race. <clears throat> Buddy Baker was the favorite going into it. He had qualified on the pole. He had won his uh, twin 125 qualifying race. And he was just dominant all week 
or all the Speed Weeks, really. I think he even won the Bush Clash. I'm not, I'd have to go back and look, but I'm pretty sure he did. So he was the favorite to go, going into it to win. And Donnie was good. Donnie qualified second, so his time stood, so he didn't have to rely on the twin 125 race. Uh, so like I said, Buddy Baker won the first one, and Darrell Walter won the second. Uh, Donnie had an engine failure in the, his race, the second qualifying race. So that's why he didn't win or finish up higher. Uh, so that's just kind of some little tidbits there. I'm doing this bracket for the alternator in this gun metal as well, but I'm gonna try to, I'll try to paint it black eventually, but I like to coat it all first. In case I miss something, then it's not like glaring out that I missed it. So that looks fairly good. Hopefully all that was in the video. Um, I'll give it a second coat here in a little bit. Rinse my brush out and I will start on the transmission. The first 15 laps of the 79 Daytona 500 was running under a caution green because it had rained the night before or that morning actually and with it being the first televised the first flag to flag televised race uh nascar was eager to get it started so they went ahead and started under green caution and those first 15 laps were the only laps Buddy Baker led in the whole race. He had an ignition that messed up on him and they didn't catch it. They tried looking at everything but they never, I don't think they ever switched the ignition boxes. It's not like today where they have a switch to do that. They had to, I think, unplug the module and plug it into the second one. And I think when they went to do that, they thought they had switched them and they just plugged it back into the same one. So that kind of cost Buddy Baker the win, I think. Um, because he won the next year in 1980, the fastest Daytona 500 ran, I do believe. So the race got, like I said, was under a green-yellow. They sent Darrell Waltrip out to kind of test the track to see what he thought of it. He, I think he probably said it wasn't ready, would be my guess, because it still looked pretty wet. If you, if you watch the video of it, it's, uh, the track is pretty soaked, but they went ahead and started anyway. Um... And Daryl was the points leader at the time. So back then, the Daytona 500 wasn't the first race of the year. It was the second. Riverside was the first race, and Daryl had won that race in January. So he was the points leader. It wasn't until, I think, the mid-'80s until the... Daytona 500 was the first race of the year. All right, let's 
silver looks good. I will do a second coat of that here shortly. I'm gonna go back and do the second coat of the gunmetal. I know it's a lot of brush cleaning, but the stuff dries fast. If you wanted to, you could just kind of go back over it as soon as it dried up. But with me doing a video of it, I didn't want to just sit there and let you watch paint dry. So I decided I would just paint and keep going. Alright, next fun fact I have is lap 31 of the 79 Daytona 500, Donnie, Kale, and Bobby Allison got into a crash on the backstretch. And it messed Donnie's car up. He ended up getting uh, on the driver's side right where he's sitting there, uh, Bobby plowed into him with his car. So it put a big old dent in it. And he ran the rest of the race that way. And he claims it made his car handle better, which it probably did. But uh, he ended up losing a lap <clears throat> in that crash because he was stuck in the mud. Kale, I think, lost two laps because he got stuck in the mud as well, but he couldn't get refired. So he had to get pushed back to the pits on a truck or by a truck. And uh, so it took him a while to get back to the pits. So he was, I think, two laps down. He made both of them up, obviously, because they were both fighting for the win at the end. But my plan is this car I'm going to build after that lap 31 wreck. And right before the turn 4 wreck on the last lap. <clears throat> so I'm going to build it with the dent in the side. And I'm building this for um, the contest that the Builders Club has, the Salvino's JR Builders Club has a build off for the Daytona 500. And I'm going to enter this car in it. That's the race version of it. And I'm also building Kale. I'm going to do both of them for that com the contest. And I'm going to do Kale's raced version as well. And Kale didn't have any damage really to his car. It was just muddy. So I'm going to put some mud to it. And he had a little bit of... He had a little bit of like oil streak in the back. on the TV panel. So I'm gonna do that as well. And I plan on setting them up like right after they hit on the back stretch. Where Kale is basically his back ends up in the air after they hit the second time after he slid out of the grass towards Donnie right in the middle of the back stretch. That's the image I'm gonna go for. We'll see how that works. All right, I'm gonna do my second coat of aluminum on the transmission and I'll call it done. I'll figure out what I'm gonna do with the pan and the intake.
This stuff goes on really, really good. Like I said, if you can find it. And you're actually not supposed to brush it, apparently, but I do anyway. It's paint. It'll go. It'll work. All right. Gotta be careful here. I spilt thinner on my hand. I don't want to wipe all the paint off. I just spent 15 minutes putting on there. Okay. Let's try. Do magnesium for the intake. It's kind of in between the gunmetal and the aluminum I just used. Like, if you can see that, this stuff is just so thin, it just runs right into every crevice. I try not to get very much paint on the surface that the uh, the rocker covers are going to go valve covers but I mean a little bit's going to get up there anyway Always make sure you got all these. Especially the front area. All painted. Because you can see it pretty easy. Go into the distributor shaft. That's color too. fairly good. Right, let's get out. Do a nice shiny transmission pan. This is gloss chrome stuff. This stuff will take a little bit longer to dry, so. I probably should have did the oil pan black first before I did this. So I have a feeling I'm going to get into it when I paint it. But maybe not. Alright, see that kind of gives it a contrast. It always helps. <clears throat> All right. 
I'll do black on the oil pan and the distributor and try to do that bracket for the alternator. And I'll probably call it good for this video. You might have to touch up one way or another. Like I'm off to touch up the block there. But that's okay, it can be done. I must not mix this paint up very good because it's a little bit weird, Ronnie. There's better. Go ahead and paint the starter too while I'm at it. I'll paint the solenoid a probably a copperish color. I'll have to go over that paint again. the distributor. Alright. <clears throat> so I'm going to paint on it for right now. Like I said, I'm going to go over and fixed a couple places I messed up there on the block but other than that it's pretty good I need to paint the alternator yet but that should be ready to go mm, I got it. <clears throat> I don't remember which model kit this came out of but it's like an engine stand it's perfect you just sit there and it'll dry be in good shape. When I come back next time, I'll go into probably primer on the chassis. Um, I've got it, I think, ready to go. Um, I'll show it to you real quick here. Don't lose anything. So I got the holes filled, most of them. I got a couple more to do, but I'll primer it and it'll show you what it's gonna look like when you get paint on it. Like I can see this one's a little bit, isn't filled in all the way. It's just a good gauge. So once I shoot it, I'll probably have to do some more fill in and then we can start shooting the paint on it. It'll be semi-gloss black. There's the roll cage, ready to go. Uh, I've got the rear end built, ready to go. So yeah, our truck will ride along on it with the front roll bar done. So, but yeah, there we go. Until next time, I'll see y'all later.